Hey there. I am going to explore the Cloudflare Workers AI API. So I don't know if you knew this or not, but you can actually hit the API. You don't have to be inside of a Workers application, although it's awesome when you are inside of a Workers application. I wanted to show you what it feels like outside of that. And I also wanted to show you what it feels like inside of a Jupyter Notebook. I don't know if you've ever played with a Jupyter Notebook before, but they are awesome for exploring APIs when you need to get information back. So what I have right here is a Jupyter Notebook and I will share the link to this. What I want to show you is these are cells in a Jupyter Notebook. So you can move around in there and see that little blue line moving around. We're gonna move around. I'm gonna run the start of this. This is kind of get us, gonna get us set up. This is gonna install what we need. We're gonna use the request library and I'm also gonna use dot in because I'm gonna load an environment if I have one locally, which I recommend you do because you never wanna put your API keys out there. So. So we're gonna do that and I'm gonna import some stuff and we're gonna come down here. If you don't have, if you use .env and you have the environment file, it'll do it. Otherwise it's gonna ask you here. It'll do a little prompt. I'm gonna go ahead and include my stuff and I'm gonna scroll all the, all the way down to this here and I'm gonna get to this and then we'll talk about it. So I'm gonna go up here to kernel and I'm gonna say restart and run kernel up to the selected cell. So I'm gonna restart it. Here it comes, it's gonna run and you'll see that what happens is it's running through each one of these cells as it goes. So it kind of executes as it goes. And, and what's cool is it keeps the state. So your state's kind of always running in the Jupyter Notebook. You might've used it before, just in case you haven't. All right, so now we're here at this. Oh, and actually it ran this one. Let's talk about what's happening here. So uh, I have a model. So, so we have uh, various models that are available. If you want to uh, take a look, you can click on this uh, explore all text generation model. So you can click into there. And you can come over here and you can look at what we have available, right? So we have Llama is available here, Mistral's available. You can actually do Code Llama if you were trying to generate code. So we have some text generation stuff that's available. And the way that it works is this is the model ID, right? And if we take a look over here, that's the model ID that I'm using, right? So, so there you go. So, and I'm using the request library and I'm making a post. I'm making a post to api.cloudflare.com. And I'm pushing in my account ID. If you haven't seen this before in Python, it's an F string, right? So I'm at string interpolating an account ID again. It's in one of those cells. So it's in it's in context. That was one of the things that we pulled, right? I pulled that from, from here, this account ID. And if you need instructions on how to get there, you can go get it here. And uh, you need to get a workers AI enabled token as well. So that that's that's what's there. So you'll see then I put the model, the, this model here is that after that. So that's the long API call that I'm doing here. Here's the API token that, that has passed in. And you've probably seen this before if you've used the, the OpenAI API, it's very similar to that. So we're gonna pass in messages and they're scoped, right? So we have this role of a system and it's a system message. And what I put here in the system message is you are a productivity assistant for users of Jupyter Notebooks for both Mac and Windows users. I want you to respond in Markdown. And then I, I pretended to be make the user question. So you can imagine if you're building a chat bot, this is what you would do. How do I use keyboard short, shortcuts to execute cells? And it says inference equals this. And so to execute cells, it, you could ask it whatever sort of question you want. If this is your first time in Jupyter Notebooks, but this is a pretty neat thing. So it generated this right underneath here. It generated this and it says that I can do, I am on a Mac and it says I can do a control enter to execute the current cell. So let's, let's try that. So I'm going to go to the next one. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of collapse this here, collapse this text generation one. And here we are in this text to image. So again, we have text to image models. We have a stable diffusion one, very popular uh, model, very specific for what you want to do if you wanted to build something where you were gonna go draw draw something, right? If you wanted to have it go render an image for you, we, we have that available. And uh, it's available as an API call, which is, is powerful, right? I and I want you to think about that and also, while we are in beta, it's free. So come quick <laughs> and use that. So again, same thing. I'm passing the model. We got the account ID and the API token and all I'm passing is a prompt. And I'm gonna have a pencil drawing of an excited developer using an API. And I'm gonna use my control enter that I was suggested to do. And you can see the little star here when it's running. So it's going, it's hitting that and it's generating it. And I'm telling it to display this image. This is this is some stuff that I imported from IPython and I'm getting back this response, response contents. Now in request that content is a string of bytes. And so that, or not a string of bytes, it is a array of bytes and it's pushing it out. And we can see that it did a really nice pencil drawing of an excited developer using the API. Look how excited that developer is. Awesome. So 
we have a bunch of models, right? There's a bunch of models that we have, a lot of the open source models that are out there for you. One of the ones that we have is this one from Meta that does this M to M. So this is a translation one. This is really, really powerful. I would like to say, so again, same thing. You're getting it. You get the swing of it. So we've got an account ID. We've got a model. We've put the API token and we're going to make this say what we want. And then we're going to do the source language is English and then Spanish. So artificial intelligence is pretty impressive these days. What do you think? I'm going to do my execute. Let's see what happens. It's going into the model. Ah, there it is. La inteligencia artificial es bastante impresionante en estos días. ¿Qué piensas? Awesome. That's pretty good Spanish. Not my Spanish, but that Spanish that it wrote. That's fast too, right? So that's pretty, what can you build with that? What, what, what are you going to build with that? Now that you have this uh, ability to do that translation, it's really, really fun, right? That that's available. It's fast. It's an API call. It's one API call uh, away from you being able to translate something on your site. And you can build tons of applications for that, right? So, all right, next, here we go. So text classification. Uh, you want to see if something is positive or negative, right? So here we go. So I'm going to say this taco is delicious. This is a, a hugging face uh, model from uh, Distilbert. And we are going to run that one and let's see what happens. So negative, very small chance that this is negative. It is super positive. Now, one thing that I want to point out, if you talk in today's parlance, maybe it might not know, right? So this is something my daughter might say. This taco slays. We're going to run that. And it sounds like a, it sounds like a negative thing, right? I guess it's like Michael Jackson's bad. I think they're back to that, like flip the thing around and it means something good. So that's this taco slays is probably a really good taco. So this is wrong. You want to be a little bit careful with it, but did you see how fast it was? Like, like, what, like check this out. This taco is so good. Watch how fast this is going to be. So you can imagine, you can imagine putting that into an app and seeing if everything coming through, all your comments, if they're positive or negative, and then that's the things that you want to flag and go kind of take a look at available an API call away. Pretty amazing, right? This is so cool. So this is this is a speech recognition model. I put here some of, I just made a little rambling thing. I'll play it for you if it lets me, I'll, I'll play it for you. And now it's running, it's running this thing, Whisper, right? So again, really quick, you're doing this and here, here's Whisper for you and it went really fast. So let's see how it did. I don't know if this is gonna play for you in the video. Uh, you should come and play this and listen to it. It's pretty good. And I'm, I'm being silly. I make noise. I said Kubernetes and it picked up Kubernetes. I mean, that's impressive. That, that's really impressive. <laughs> All right. So, and you can see that has by a second. So use case here, right? If you're trying to transcribe a video or, or an audio file, you saw how fast that was too, right? So that's really neat. And again, all I'm doing is I'm passing in the bytes from that, right? So I went and I got this raw, the raw bytes. I went and got that. And this audio has the request library. What it does is it gives me back this array of bytes. And I pass that to here. I, I push that across. This is probably doing a base 64 encoding. And if you needed to learn more about it, remember you can click here and you can go and look at the docs, right? Right now we have this, but we're always adding more models. That's the thing to remember too. There's always more models coming in and we're always trying to give, get more use cases by, by what people are using. So please let us know what you're using as well. Thanks. All right. Image classification. I have a pretty silly uh, image here that I was just trying to test it with, right? So you can kind of give it things. And so we're using this, this one from Microsoft. This is this ResNet 50. And again, getting an image request and I'm pushing the, the data, the bytes to it. And I'm going to pull back the inference and we'll see what happens here. And when it goes, there's a picture of me with a burrito. I, I'm a kind of a big fan of when burritos stand up, right? And the reason why I chose this photo is because it's not very clear that that's a burrito, right? I have a burrito standing in front of my face. I could probably think that like my eyebrow, look at my eyebrow, look at like a caterpillar is here. But look at what it did. It found the burrito. It found guacamole, which is great. Bagel is questionable. Spatula, maybe that's talking about my eyebrow, I'm not sure. And pot pie. Don't know what's going on uh, with the pot pie. I guess it kind of does look like a pot pie, right? It was a, it was a mole burrito. I'm a big, big fan of that, those from this place by me. And I love when burritos can stand up. It's a sign of a good burrito. And this is me capturing that. And it also understanding a burrito, which is just impressive. So these are available. And if you come into our docs, if you like, so for instance, remember, if you want to go explore these docs over here, and you come under this tutorials, it's also in here. This, this Jupyter Notebook has been added here. So if you wanted to come into the docs as well, you come here and you can download the notebook. You'd get it, just open it up and run it, and we should be good to go. So I would love to hear what models you're using, what use cases you might have in the comments. Let me know. Thanks. Bye. See you soon.